Crane and Company of Dalton, Massachusetts, is known far and wide as provider of the paper on which United States currency is printed. With origins dating back to the Revolution, they even have a ledger showing an order from Paul Revere. Crane literally has been at the forefront of paper production in this country from the very beginning. Tonight, Peter Hopkins, director of the Crane Museum of Papermaking, shares the company's extraordinary history. Connecting Point executive producer Tony Dunn and videographer Mark Langeman also got a hands-on lesson in the art and craft of making paper, a process that changed very little in the last 200 years. Everybody carries some of our product, U.S. currency paper, but they know so little about it. People tend not to know an awful lot about their money, but we try and teach them some things that they don't know. You want to spend this $100 bill? What do they do? They take a pen and go across it like that. What are they looking for? You have to come here to find out. If you want to do a counterfeit, it'll end up being on paper that fluoresces under ultraviolet. U.S. currency paper does not. So why do these fluoresce? You're going to have to come here to find out. Crane history usually traces back to 1801 when Zenas Crane opened his mill here in Dalton. But actually, the Crane family history of papermaking goes back to 1770. Paul Revere was our first currency paper customer in 1776. So they were off to a good start, obviously. And uh, Zenas Crane in 1799 uh, headed out west here from Worcester and uh, found this beautiful location on the Housatonic River and it's easy enough to say the rest is, is history but there's 215 years that went on um, beyond that. Um, looking at Crane um, today, um, very very well known obviously for its fine engraved letterpress, 100% cotton stationery, but most famous for making all the paper for United States currency and they've done so since 1879. Various forms of cotton have been used um, over the years. We used hundreds of millions of pounds of waste uh, scraps from Levi Strauss, Lee, Wrangler as the major cotton content in U.S. currency paper. But that came to an unfortunate halt about 10, 12 years ago when someone decided to put spandex in denim, stretchy jeans. And we found that it messes up a paper machine pretty good and does not stretch your money. The museum has, has changed um, quite significantly um, in the last three years. Um, we've added retail space and we've added hands-on space. The newest addition is, is a papermaking facility um, out back, which is used uh, as an extension on the visitor's experience, but also as what's called a maker space. Um, we have lots of equipment and tools and machinery um, that most paper makers or paper artists don't have access to. They come here and use our stuff. In this new paper making facility that we just opened up, we want people to be thinking about what they're making paper from and what they're making paper for. We talked about making paper out of blue jeans. It makes a blue paper, there's a connection. This piece of paper here, this was my dad's World War II army coat. I made paper from it that I'm using as backing pages for his World War II scrapbook. So if you'd like to come in here and make some paper, there's got to be a connection. There's got to be a story. If you want to do your wedding announcements, better do it from your mom's wedding gown. That's what we're looking for. Because we have all this equipment, we can make paper out of a lot of different things as long as they're based on cellulose. Um, today, we're making paper out of blue jeans. In order to get from fabric scraps to paper, there's an intermediate step which is pulp. So paper making in its simplest form, which this is, whether it's in the mills or here, is simply removing a measured amount of fiber from your pulp using a screen. And the second process, both in the mills and here, is suction. And I'll apply the suction underneath the screen, and when I do, you'll see the instant when pulp turns to paper. So at this point, we're probably about 70, 75% water, and then we've gotten all that we can get out by suction. So the third process in getting rid of the water is pressure. And we cover the paper with another felt, 
and run it through a series of uh, wet presses. And at this point, the wet paper um, can hold itself up. It's still pretty fragile, but it can hold itself together. Uh, so we still have a lot of water left to get rid of, and the last process is heat. The last process to get rid of water is heat. We have a heated drum here. Cover it with a felt. Turn it on. So after about 10 minutes or so, that fragile wet piece of paper is now completely dry and very, very strong. I could stand here all day and do this. No glue, no chemicals, just fibers interlocking make a really, really strong piece of paper. The way we make paper here, we hope is easily transferable. We've got a vacuum system from Home Depot, an old print dryer from eBay, um, so that anybody can do this. You can't, you're not gonna be able to make paper out of blue jeans, but anybody can make paper using stuff that they can find in their garage, in their kitchen, in a hardware store, um, easily done. We don't take ourselves very seriously. We're very informal um, and people come in here and we get to teach them about light, about chemistry, about feel and sound, things that no one knows about because we don't think about our money. They have fun, but nobody has more fun than me.